Hello everyone, it's good to see you uh, again this week and today we have special guest, uh, Dr. Lucinda Mosher, who will uh, lead us a session on uh, still connected to land. So I will give the time to Lucinda, please. So we've called this Tithing Our Time, Musings on Keeping a Holy Lent. It's my great pleasure to be leading our community worship today. Thank you for that. Um, thank you to Hans for his technical help. I begin with a reading from the New Testament from uh, Paul's epistle to the Romans. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. In the church calendar followed by many Christians, and by the way, I'm an Episcopalian Christian, uh, the season after Christmas is called Epiphany. And it was all about looking outward, about celebrating the many manifestations of God in our midst. The, um, but Lent, the 40-day season we have just begun, is a time for Christians to turn inward. Lent is a time for Christians to ponder, one way or another, what it means to be Christian. Lent, it has been observed, is a season which lasts for about a tenth of the year. So when you think about it in those terms, says Frederick Beekner, who's one of my favorite authors, to keep a holy Lent is to tithe our time, to return 10% of our time to God. But how exa exactly? Uh, I might have called this talk Musings with Music. I am bivocational, as many of you know. So allow me to take you to the small Episcopal church I serve here in Green Cove Springs, Florida. So what does it mean to keep a Holy Lent? I will accompany our wonderful cantor, Thea Burke on the organ and she will sing you an answer to that question. And Hans will cue up the video. Now, if we have trouble with the audio of at, at all during this chapel service, please know we're going to put the links to all of the videos in the chat with the password so you can listen to them on your own uh, yourselves later on if we if you wish. And so Hans, go ahead. Trust and dedicate. 
In some streams of Christianity, Lenten observance connotes giving up something, some, often something comparatively trivial. Giving up something for Lent has never worked very well for me. For me, to keep a holy Lent is to take up something, that is to embrace a spiritual discipline, a daily practice that has the potential to be transformational for the heart, the mind, the soul. The purpose of spiritual disciplines, says Richard Foster, who in my experience explains them better than anybody, is simply to place ourselves before God. That's all. The possibilities are manifold. In his celebration of discipline, the path to spiritual growth, Foster provides a chapter each on four inward disciplines, meditation, prayer, fasting, and study, four outward disciplines, simplicity, solitude, submission, and service, and four corporate disciplines, things that require a group to do, confession, worship, guidance, and celebration. For each discipline, Foster spells out a rationale and gives how-to instructions. So I thought we'd look at his um, uh, discipline of study. For, he says the discipline of study has four steps, repetition to ingrain habits of thought, concentration, which has to do with focusing our attention, comprehension, which is understanding brought to a new level, and reflection, wherein we can define the meaning of what we've been concentrating on. Lent is an opportunity to take those four steps more seriously. Foster has made a lot of sense to a lot of people over the past three decades. His book has sold more than two million copies. If we but choose one spiritual discipline and follow Foster's instructions, Lent will be more meaningful, I am sure of it. Can't seem to get started in Lent? Choose another season. There is no wrong time to take up a spiritual discipline. You're not a Christian, you say? No worries, these disciplines can work for anyone, really. In any case, Whichever disciplines we choose and whenever in the year we implement them, Foster stresses that these activities do not earn us God's grace or anything else. They do have the potential to make us more aware of the divine grace we enjoy already. So what if you were to make studying for your courses a spiritual discipline using Foster's method? What difference would it make? Think about that as I play for you a piece uh, by jo Johann Sebastian Bach based on a tune associated with a Lenten hymn for Compline, the last prayer office before bedtime. Hans, can you cue that up for us?
Without a doubt, Jesus is at the center of Lenten disciplines. During Lent, some Christians perform daily or weekly the devotional liturgy known as the Way of the Cross, an adaptation to local use of a custom widely observed by pilgrims to Jerusalem, the offering of prayer at a series of places in that city traditionally associated with the passion and death of Jesus. Uh, the number of stations may vary. Uh, at my parish, we mark 14. Um, some of them are based directly on or are inferred from events recorded in the Gospels. Others of these stations are um, about episodes in Jesus' tra uh, travel to his death that are drawn from pious legend. The liturgy we use for this at St. Mary's, uh, and, and we do it outside, as you can see, the trees are marked. Uh, the, uh, the, the liturgy we use provides Bible passages, antiphonal affirmations, supplications, and collects, formal prayers for each stop along the way. As we arrive at each station, we say or sing a stanza from a 13th century hymn called Stabat Mater Dolorosa, which reflects on the perspective and experience of Mary, the mother of Jesus. For example, by means of one of the last stanzas of this hymn, we appeal to Mary singing or saying, um, where, oh, there we go. Um, Make me feel as thou hast felt, make my soul to glow and melt with the love of Christ my Lord. Indeed, during Lent, some Christians pay considerable heed to Mary because she is my parish's patron saint. That is part of our practice. So during Lent, I will find times to program anthems that recall Mary's experience, like this one, which is based on a pious legend. Um, Hans, would you queue up that next video?
So methods of keeping a Holy Lent are many and uh, William Arthur Ward expresses his approach in the form of an antiphonal poem. I invite you to unmute and, and join me in reciting it. I'll take the uh, italicized lines, but you can join me on those or take the bold faced lines, whichever line you want to recite, but we, we want all of them recited. I'll begin. So as a Lenten discipline, fast from judging others. Feast, feast on Christ, Christ dwelling, dwelling in, them. in them. Fast from fear of illness. Feast, feast on the healing, the healing power, power of God. God. Fast from words that pollute. Feast, feast, feast from speech that purifies. That purifies. Mm -hmm. Fast from discontent. Feast, feast on, on gratitude. On gratitude. Fast from anger. Feast, 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 feast on patience. Fast from pessimism. Feast, feast, feast on optimism. optimism. Fast from negatives. Feast, feast on alternatives. alternatives. Fast from bitterness. Feast, feast on, on forgiveness. 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 Fast from self-concern. Feast, feast on, on compassion. compassion. Fast from suspicion. Feast, feast on, on truth. On truth. Fast from gossip. Feast, feast on, on purposeful, purposeful silence. silence. Fast from problems that overwhelm. Feast, feast on, on earth. Earth. Fast from worry. Feast, feast on faith. faith. If you were to tithe your time, to whom or what would you want to dedicate that 10% of your year? From what would you fast? On what would you feast? Ponder that as I play a musical meditation by Johannes Brahms on a very famous Lenten hymn.
Lent is a time for Christians to turn inward, a time to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Each Lent, I reflect further on my vocation as a religious, an interreligious relations specialist. I take my warrant for that work from the baptismal covenant, a ritual declaration of who we are, to whom we belong, and how therefore we shall live, that many of us will renew, uh, reaffirm at the Easter vigil in just a few weeks time. Toward the end of the baptismal covenant, we are asked, will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? We always promise that we will, but the all and the every make this a very tall undertaking, which is why we need this season of pondering. If we truly would tithe our time, if we would invest 10% of the year in turning inward to ask ourselves how we might better be like Jesus and to ask that God guide our minds, fill our imaginations, control our wills, then use us to the welfare of others, how much better able we will be to turn outward fruitfully during the year's other 90%. Yes, Lent is a penitential season, but it is also a time for recharging our spiritual batteries. So it need not be devoid of joy. Indeed, for me as a church musician, one of the joys of Lent is preparation and performance of this season's exquisite hymns and anthems. The mood and the message of that music is often somber, but it often encourages pondering about how to move forward as our best selves in this one precious life we have. For those of us tithing our time at the moment, I suggest that we adopt the attitude commended by St. Paul in his letter to the Philippians, an attitude in which introspection and joy are as inseparable as two sides of the same coin. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your, gentle, let your gentleness be known to everyone. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So indeed, please think on these things as I close our time together with a toccata on a hymn of praise and thanksgiving, which I truly love. I hope you enjoy it. Hans?
And so, why is this still here? Let's see. So life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind and may the blessing of God who made us, who loves us and who journeys with us be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much. <clears throat> yes, thank you very much, uh, Lucinda, for uh, leading us on prayer this week. And if you have time to stay for community, oh, sorry, sure. for community hour, Holy Ground Coffee Hour, please stay. And next week uh, we will have, uh, we have no uh, guest speaker, but it will be more participation of who participates, who come. So <laughs> come again. Yeah, that's a, that will be a Lexio Divina, interreligious divine readings. All right. <laughs>